CD2 Track 1 Hi, James. How's your alternative energy research project going? To be honest, I'm a bit confused about how to do the research for all the different energy types. Well, the first thing you do is to make sure you focus your question, otherwise you'll have too much to read and you won't be able to select the key arguments. So how do I do that? Start with the general topic of alternative energy and then keep asking questions until you've narrowed the topic down to one particular area. Then, when you have your question, make a list of the reading you will need. This list should be general to give you some background, but remember you'll need to focus on the issues related to the question, so the reading list should also be specific to the actual energy source you've chosen, whether it's wind or solar or wave power. And then start reading? Absolutely. You need to start straight away, but don't forget to make notes as you read. Otherwise, you won't be able to keep track of ideas for future reference purposes. Yes, that makes sense. I think that's my main problem. I don't recall where I've read different ideas, so I can't find them again later. And my friends have warned me that not recording ideas in a system can really hinder your progress. Your friends are right. It's a common problem amongst students. You need a system. Anyway, once you've done the reading and made all your notes, you need to organise them so that you can analyse and think about what you've read. But I prefer to just start writing and then go back and look at my notes later. Hmm, I wouldn't recommend it. I think you need to give yourself more time to digest the material and arrange it into some kind of system ready for analysis in terms of relevance to your research question. Well, that's a great help. Thank you, Professor Jenkins. You're welcome. Come and see me again if you have any more problems. Track 2 Hi Mary, how are you? I'm fine, thanks John. How's your essay going? Not so good actually. Would you be able to help me with it? Of course. What do you want to know? Well, just the type of information you're going to write about. I won't copy you. I just want some ideas to get me started. Well, Mr Jones advised us to focus on just two or three forms of non-traditional energy for our evaluation. So, I think I'm going to choose solar. It's fairly easy to evaluate. Are you going to explain both the positive and negative aspects? Well, Mr Jones warned us not to get too involved in the ethical aspects of the topic. So, I'm going to structure my essay by using the advantages and disadvantages of each energy form. That's why I also want to talk about biofuels. I think there are more disadvantages. Oh, I see what you're doing. Using the negative points of one to highlight the positive points of the other. That's a smart idea. And what about the third energy source? Hmm. I was having difficulty choosing between nuclear and wind because they're both problematic, but I've decided to do nuclear for my presentation instead. Thanks, Mary. Chatting to you has helped me think a bit more clearly about my essay. That's fine. Good luck with it. Track 3 Hi there, guys. Nice to see you. And you. So, are we going to finalise what we're doing for the environmental science presentation today? I hope so. The presentation is next week. Actually, I wanted to talk to you about this, because I think we need to take out some of the information we're including. Oh, really? Like what, Shirley? Well, I'd like to suggest taking out the background details. I think it's just too much information to fit into ten minutes. But isn't it important to make sure the audience understands the context? I don't think so. And, and anyway, we could include the background details on the handout. OK, I'm with you on that. Chris, what do you think? Yes, OK, that's fine. I'll add the details to the handout. Anything else? Yes. I'm not sure whether the solar energy statistics will be too much for the audience to take in. There's a lot of numbers and graphs. Can we put the statistics on a handout too? Hmm, I see your point. We don't want people looking at lots of numbers while we're speaking. But without the statistics, I don't see how we can support our main ideas. Actually, you're right, Tom. I hadn't thought about that. In that case, can we delete the diagrams? It's going to take too much time to explain them. Hmm, let's think about that a bit more. 
If we have to choose between taking out the statistics or the diagrams, I think we should opt for the diagrams. They're less crucial to the presentation. What do you both think? I think it's going to work much better than the original plan we had. Absolutely. We won't have to worry about talking for longer than 15 minutes if we remove the diagrams and focus on the main ideas and statistics. Shall we all meet again tomorrow to finalise the details? Track 4 Hi everyone. Sorry I'm late. Don't worry, Hannah. We've only just started. We thought we should go over the theories we've studied so far, so we're ready for the seminar discussion on Thursday afternoon. Of course, you're right. I don't think I can remember all the theories related to consumer energy consumption. No, Hannah. That's the reading for Friday's lecture. Thursday's seminar discussion is about the current thinking on alternative energy. Oh, yes. Sorry, I'm a bit disorganised at the moment. Never mind. So, Mike, what do you think about the academic's point of view on nuclear energy? Well, I think I have to agree with them on price being a factor for choosing nuclear in the long term. Me too. It's definitely the most cost-effective measure. Don't you agree, Hannah? To start with, I didn't, but the text Professor Edwards gave us persuaded me. The only thing that concerns me is that there have been some disasters in various parts of the world. Yes, some texts warn of the dangers of nuclear power, using previous disasters as examples. I know what you mean, but I suppose the risk is minimal these days. What do you think about wind and solar energy in terms of the price in relation to the advantages? For me, they're just not worth it. Both are expensive, and it's difficult to predict the amount of energy each one will produce. You know, Mike, I'm afraid I don't share your opinion. This text here talks about the likelihood of improved technology, increasing the amount of energy and reducing the costs in the future. Yes, but that's not enough proof to be sure of the relationship between the costs and the benefits. Exactly. The evidence seems incomplete to me. Well, that's something we can follow up on with the rest of the group in the seminar on Thursday. Track 5. Section 3. You will hear students and a tutor discussing an energy project. First, you will have 20 seconds to look at questions 1 to 7. Now listen carefully and answer questions 1 to 7. Good morning, Phil. Jackie, I hope your project is going well. Good morning, Mr. Jackson. Hi, Mr. Jackson. Well, we've made a start on analysing the different forms of renewable energy, but unfortunately, we don't really agree on some points. OK, why don't we talk about it? Well, Jackie believes that all forms of renewable energy are beneficial economically, whereas I doubt that that's true for all of them. Such as? Such as wind, wave and solar energy, because they're less reliable. That's a valid point, but I don't think that's a large enough factor to disregard it completely. Exactly. That's what I said. However, another drawback is that they're generally very expensive to produce. Yes, you're right. And that is a concern when evaluating their usefulness in future. I agree with you to a point, but it's likely that the cost will come down. I read a report in the Journal of Environmental Science that estimates the cost would fall by 20% over the next 10 years, which is significant, isn't it? Absolutely, Jackie. But you need to think about how difficult it is to predict the future cost of non-traditional energy sources before you believe the report. Remember, in your project, I want to see evidence of critical analysis. Make sure you've analyzed all the information rather than just accepting the information that you agree with. Also, it's very important that you demonstrate wide reading around the subject. I know. It's just that I'm not convinced that it's going to continue to be that expensive, especially if there's a demand from consumers. Well, what about if we analyze the costing process as part of our project? That's an excellent idea, Phil. OK, so let's imagine that we want to forecast the cost of producing solar energy. How could we do that, Jackie? Hmm, well... I think we'd have to start by working out how many hours of daylight there are in the UK per year. The meteorological office would have data on that. Then estimate the number of hours of sun to get a rough total. 
And then I suppose we'd need to work out how much it would cost to supply the average home with solar power, and then extrapolate that to get a number for the whole country. Good. And don't forget the price of power conversion stations. This will have a significant impact on overall expenditure. And there's one more factor you haven't taken into account yet regarding the consumers. Um, whether they would change from traditional to renewable energy? No, but think about what might make them change. Oh, yes. How much they would be willing to pay. Exactly. Well done. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you will have 20 seconds to look at questions 8 to 10. Track 6. Now listen and answer questions 8 to 10. So, our project is going to cover three main areas. Firstly, comparing the main forms of alternative energy, solar, wind, wave, and biofuels in terms of production costs. Secondly, we'll take solar energy as an example and do a cost prediction. And lastly, we'll analyze whether they're likely to replace traditional fossil fuels in the future. That sounds like a comprehensive project with a good focus. Now, what data are you going to use and what approach will you use for the analysis? Ah, now that's something we do agree on. We want to use the reports you gave us in our last lecture and some statistics from the Government, Environment and Energy Department. In terms of analysis, we're going to use a cross-referencing method where we compare each of the government reports with the Robertson report and highlight any differences. Then we'll analyze these to see why the differences exist and where more research needs to be done. That is the end of section 3. In the exam, you will have half a minute to check your answers.